Right, cool. We're going. We're going. Cool. Let's do it. All right, so I'm just going to read the prompt and let's go through the questions. That's fine. Sweet. All right. Thanks for taking the time to participate in our study. I'm Dave, and today I'll be monitoring the interview. The purpose of, the, of this research is to better understand the consumers' general attitudes towards smartwatches. The results of our research will, we hope, help understand the smartwatch market and create a new product accordingly. I want to stress that your participation is entirely voluntary that you may choose not to answer any of these questions we do ask, and you may leave at any time you choose. We are videotaping this session only so that we can more easily produce a written transcript for the discussion. Everything you say will be kept confidential. We will not identify you by name in the transcript or of the meeting in our research reports. First, I'd like to introduce, I'd like if you could introduce yourself by telling me where you live, how old you are, where do you work, and what you do at your work, and if you go to school, what's your major? Sure, yeah, um, from Chicago suburbs, um, student at Marquette University, studying political science and economics, and I've also worked um, for political campaigns and um, for tech startups. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna ask you a series of questions that addresses your attitude toward uh, watches. So sure. do you normally wear a watch? Yes, normally. I don't want one on now, but I normally do wear one. Okay. Do you, would you wear a higher end watch, a nicer yes. watch? Yes. Yes. And then how, how do you perceive luxury with watches versus your typical standard watch? Yeah. Um, I think for me, a lot of it is, it comes out of two things, craftsmanship and the heritage of the brand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think I take I pay a little closer attention than most people do mm -hmm. with with watches um, in terms of how they're made, the components, what kind of movements are in them, mm -hmm. um, why they have that, those movements. So I think when you're paying for a higher quality watch that could be considered like a luxury piece, like a Rolex or you know, a Patek, anything like that, it's it's because you're, you're not just buying the brand, you're buying the engineering that goes into the watch. Mm -hmm. So that's why I that's how I tend to perceive that. Mm -hmm. Great. What would you say, how would you say luxury watches explain the owner of the watch? A um, statement that comes along with it. Yeah, I mean, it can come down to a lot of things. It can come down to, you know, I mean, if, if they were, you know, a, a, you know, a gold Patek Calatrava on a leather band, they could be doing professional use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they could be, you know, it could go with their, their wear a suit every day, could go with that. You know, if they're rolling like a Rolex Daytona, they could be using it for, you know, if they're timing something, if they're in their work, or if they're just, you know, if they're timing things in general, if they run or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of times people wear dive watches, like a Seamaster, and, you know, they, it's practical. It's, it, you can use, it's, I mean, people don't realize that a lot of these watches are designed to be tools. They're tool, mm -hmm. That's why they're made out of really good stainless steel, um, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're meant to be worn and actually used as for functional reasons besides just telling time or making a, a status symbol. But, I mean, not... People do wear them as data symbols, but a lot of times they can be used also for actual practical reasons. So would you, I guess, in the context of being in the market for yeah. purchasing a watch, would you purchase a luxury watch for yourself? Why or why not? Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I um, I actually just made a purchase. Uh, the reason I did it was, and, and I'm, I buy long-term pieces. I know when I, when I bought my most recent one, it's gonna last, you know, decades. I knew that going into it, as long as you maintain it well, and you take care of it and service it, make sure the seals are all functional. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want something that's gonna last for decades. I want something that's never gonna go obsolete. The, de the technology's never gonna be bad. It's just gonna, it just does one thing and tells the time. Mm -hmm. That's why I like watches like that. So would you like a luxury watch as a gift for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, next question: Would you buy a luxury watch as a gift for another person? Why? Why? Yeah. No. I think you know a, a watch can be a lot of things. It's a good gift uh, depending on the occasion. You know, a lot of times you get guys get gifts as you know if they're you know work for a company for 20, 30 years. Um, it's a good, you know, people give a, a watch, it's kind of a, it's a, a milestone marker, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of your, it's just a lot of times a symbol of achievement. Um, 
So for a special occasion, yeah, I think a watch is a very appropriate gift. Um, even like, I mean, some people give watches for birthdays, you know, special birthdays. Um, I, I think a lot of times, it, because it's a higher priced item, and you, people have it for a long time, it's designed to, as a gift, it's designed to mark a, mark a milestone. Definitely. Um, so yeah, that's why I think it's, it could be appropriate as a gift, absolutely. In your own words, how would you compare smart watches versus traditional watches? Yeah, I think they're two totally different things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of times we're roll we're you know combining these two products because they you wear them on your wrist. I don't think that's necessarily the the right thing to do. Um, they're just two totally different products. One is a piece of technology, basically a really great piece of technology that can do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But a traditional wristwatch is not it, that's not the design of it. It's designed to do one thing: is tell the time. Now, I mean, but with that said, I mean they have a lot of functions, like, you know, you can have a chronograph, the time thing, is that can be considered like an app, you know, or you can have a moon phase, that can be considered an app, you know, but with the difference between that and the smartwatch is that that's never going to go obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, that's always going to be relevant, you know, you're always going to be able to time something, you're always going to be able to look at a moon phase. Um, and the, the idea there is that you're, that's going to be your long-term investment, that's, gonna, that's never going to be, no one's ever going to look at that and say, okay, that's that's old. Um, when watches get up there in age, the people say they're vintage and they carry a certain connotation with them. Um, you know, as a lot of times you get into watch collecting on the high end level, people will start looking at even certain, um, you know, product numbers to determine year and serial numbers to determine year because they want, you know, a, a certain watch for a certain year. Um, I don't think you're going to have those smart watches because by the time you get to the point where they're vintage, the technology in them is going to be so far obsolete that mm -hmm. they're not even going to be useful anymore. Definitely. So I think that's what they're two very different markets, two different, very different products. So the next series of questions is going to address your general attitude about smart watches. So mm -hmm. we'll start off with the first question. So do you own or would you like to own a smart watch? Yeah, I don't own a smart watch. Um, I've looked into it. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, I don't think I have a use for it. Um, I wouldn't use it to exercise, really. That's a pretty common reason people buy them. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I, if I'm call, making a phone call or sending a message, I do it on my phone. Mm -hmm. If I'm sending an email, it's there on my phone or my computer. So I think a lot of the, the uses for um, a smartwatch, I just don't have. Now, that, that's not saying that no one else has them. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're selling a lot of them. I just, I don't think I'm the right person for okay. them. Yeah. That's fair. So what brands come to mind when you think about smartwatches? Yeah, I think Apple's probably the main one. Okay. Um, you know, I think, you know, there's been, people don't really, I think smartwatches has been around for a while. Um, there's not nearly as advanced as the Apple one. Um, and to tell you the truth, I really can't think of anyone else that's come close to Apple. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I know Motorola's made one, I believe. I think mm -hmm. LG might have. I believe so. Um, they might have, I've double checked that. But I, I don't think anyone has come close to, to an Apple. I think Apple, that that's what we I think define smartwatch as now. It has so many features, mm -hmm. and and it's not and it's a good looking piece. You know, a lot a lot of the previous smartwatches have been clunky and almost I I guess they're just not they don't look refined. Mm -hmm. I think the Apple Watch, even though it's kind of square, a little bit chunky, um, depending on the model, you could wear it with a lot of different. You know, wardrobe choices. So I think that's probably in terms of aesthetics and just function. I think it's probably the way to go right now. Yeah. So going off of that previous question, yeah. how would you perceive the, the brand? The Apple brand? The brand? Well, yeah, I mean, it's innovation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, they're, right now, I mean, they've been on, you know, a lot, they've been pushing a lot of things. I mean, you know, it was the, I mean, in early 2000s was the iPod, you know, you know, um, for a while there with, the, with just the Mac series, they've been doing really cool stuff with that. And yeah. I think with the iPhone, one of the really great smart phones, you mm -hmm. know, before we, you know, we were on flip phones not, you know, a decade ago, <laughs> and we started smart phones. I think App Apple is, again, the forefront of that. Yeah. The, the iPhone is the standard for a lot of the cell phones we have. So I think, you know, now we're talking about watches, and if we're talking about smart watch, I think it's definitely the Apple. If we want innovation and quality, I think Apple's probably the way to go. So how would you describe the smart watch product the Apple Watch, so to speak. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's kind of goes going off before. I think if you want something to, you know, kind of link everything together, that's easy accessible, which is your wrist. That's probably what you would use as a smartwatch. I mean, that's kind of defines the practical use of one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, one of the reasons that watches started getting worn 
um, on the wrist instead of the pocket was because it was just easily accessible. Mm -hmm. um, you just throw it in your wrist and you can always look at it. Definitely. Um, so if you want that kind of functionality, like you have your text messages, you know, the weather, I mean, everything you want, everything on your wrist, um, it's probably the way to go. Interesting. That's, that's a cool way to kind of think about it. So, do you, I guess with regards to your preferences, yeah. do your smartwatch preferences differ from that of your peers? I think so. Um, and, and, and I don't. I think I don't really prefer a particular smartwatch. I mean, if I had to buy one, I'd probably buy the Apple. Mm -hmm. But a lot of a lot of people, especially my age, um, really want. They like the idea of a smartwatch. Mm -hmm. um, and I, a lot of them say, well, everyone's going to have a smartwatch in 10 years. And I just don't, I mean, I don't think that's the case. Because, again, I think they're two different products. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you know, if I buy a Rolex, a Rolex is going to last forever. You know I mean? It's never going to go obsolete as long as I maintain it. And it's really, it's always going to tell the time. It's always going to have a stainless steel bracelet or gold or whatever material mm -hmm. you buy. And it just it serves its purpose. The smartwatch, you know, a lot of people like them, but they have no problem replacing them in two years, three years. I don't see watches that way, um, so that's why I think it's more of a novelty and like a piece of technology than it really is a wristwatch. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's where the difference between me and people my age is that they want something, they think everyone's going to have one, everyone needs one. I don't think it's the case. Um, cause I think, I think a, a wristwatch and a smartwatch are just two different, they're, by combining them into one market I think is a mistake, I think they're two different things. Yeah. So, if given the opportunity, would you choose a smartwatch over an equally valued traditional watch? And what factors would really play the role here? Yeah, I think it depends. Um, I think I guess in the, in like with any other piece of like you know anything you can wear, it really comes down to value. Mm -hmm. um, so you know a, a a base Apple Watch costs about three hundred bucks, something like that, yeah. around there. Right. Um, it's really hard to find, with exceptions, a really, really good wristwatch for that, a traditional one for that price. Now, um, you know, Swiss Army makes a really solid one. Mm -hmm. You know, Hamilton's a classic brand. Um, so there are some watches like that, uh, even Tissot makes brand, uh, watches with, you know, ETA mechanical movements that are really, really good workhorse mm -hmm. watches, really solid ones that'll really, you know, be able to power through pretty much anything you put them through. Um, so, if around that price range, I think you can do it, but it comes down to value. Would you use the you know Apple Watch more for that money and be okay replacing it for that money, or would you be more comfortable with like a Hamilton or with something like that where you can you know get that long term use out of it? But I mean, the, what, the top end Apple Watch is like what like close to twenty thousand dollars, something like that, and to me, that's just ridiculous because you're basically encasing a laptop in gold. Exactly. So to me, you know, for for eighteen thousand dollars, I mean, there's a lot of really good watches I could go with. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I mean, I mean if I wanted it in gold, um, it'd be a little bit tougher um, because an all gold, a really good all gold watch is going to run you about thirty thousand um, dollars. But you can get some really great stuff um, for. Eighteen thousand dollars, even a little over, a little under. You know, Audemars Piguet makes a great one for a great sports watch. You know, the Rolex Daytona is about twelve thousand stainless. Rolex Submariner two tone with the gold is about thirteen thousand. So you can, I mean, for value for money, it depends what you're looking for. Um, I just think it's really tough. I think it'd be a really tough proposition to buy a piece of technology that's going to be obsolete eventually for that much money when mm -hmm. you can get a really, really great wristwatch and you know, really basically steel or two-tone for for about the same, even a little bit less. So yeah. that's just kind of way, again, from a value perspective, that's kind of how I perceive it. Yeah, so following that, what characteristics would your ideal smartwatch need to have? Yeah, I mean, most important, it's got to tell the time. Like, that's, it's, that's the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got to be accurate. I, I can have as many features as I want, but if it's, if it's up and down, I... That, that's going to be the key. It's going to be legible, it's going to be easy to get to. Um, that's one problem I have with the Apple Watch, actually. For, I can't, it's, for some reason, the menu with all different options, I, I was playing with it, and for some reason, I just can't get, like, I don't know why the time is just not an easier thing to get to. It's, yeah. not, it's a watch, like, you know, I need to tell the time. 
Um, but it'd be nice to have other things too. Like, I mean, one thing the Apple Watch has I think is really, really cool is the map function. Because um, you're not really sure where you're going, you're driving a car, I mean, that's really easy just to look down at your wrist, or if you're walking somewhere, it's really easy just to walk, look down at your wrist and see where you're going, which is kind of neat. Um, so I like that a lot. It's one of the functions I really like. Um, well, I think weather is cool. To have the weather on there is really nice. Um, really, all the functions that the Apple Watch has, I think, are very useful. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really hard for another brand to come around, put a product out at the same price and have less features, and me not want to go with the Apple. Like the Apple is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and if I if I was buying one, it'd be really hard to overlook that because they offer so much in such a really good package for a good price, and mm -hmm. it's. It makes a lot of sense from a value standpoint. Yeah. So, do you think wearing a smartwatch would affect your interaction with your friends and family? I don't think so. I, I, don't, I mean, unless I'm glaring down on it all the time. I'm not, I mean, I don't think that'd be a problem. I mean, the nice thing about having a thing on your wrist is that you can kind of tuck it away if, you know, if you're not using it. Unlike a phone, where if I'm picking up a phone, I'm always looking at it. Yeah. The wrist, you kind of glance, which is, I mean, that's... I guess if I'm doing that a lot, maybe, but I don't think it's going to be, I don't think that would be a big problem. What about communication? The communication between your family and your friends? I think it would just be different. I don't think it would change, I don't think it would make it better or worse. Maybe change it, maybe it would respond to a text faster or whatever, pick up the phone faster, if, if anything. But other than that, um, I don't think it would be a big difference. Also, I'm overlooking something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, smartwatch usability, the next few questions will mm -hmm. cover that subject. Yep. So, starting off. What functionalities of a smartwatch might seem useful to you in daily life? Um, I think the weather thing is very useful. Okay. Um, not that my phone doesn't have that, but that for some reason, that to me is just very, very useful. That and the maps, for some reason. The map thing I think is the coolest thing on a smartwatch, because that's, that's really, I think that's one of the most important features of the Apple Watch is the maps, because you know, a lot, even though a lot of cars are coming standard with GPS now, mm -hmm. you still got to walk places. And if you're in a big city like Milwaukee, Chicago, New York, LA, um, and you have no idea where you're going, it's very, it, I mean, that's just, that could be, you know, that's interesting being, you know, 20 minutes late, 20 minutes early. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's probably, think that, to me, that's the coolest thing is the maps. I think that's very cool. Interesting. Do you think a smartwatch would lessen your time spent interacting with your smartphone? I don't know, um, mainly because I don't know enough about the capabilities of the Apple Watch. Like I, I think I'd use the phone more because I think I think it's just easier for me to type something in than speak into the watch. Because mm -hmm. then you got to like fix where the watch didn't pick up, what you got, what you said. So I think I'd still use the smartphone because I know what I'm, I know what I'm doing every single time. So I think it's more practical. So would you wear a smartwatch to measure? Let's say fitness activity during an yeah, exercise. Yeah, I think that's one. Of the, I think that's one of the, probably the biggest uses for it mm -hmm. is that. Um, I don't know if I necessarily use it for that. Um, I have no reason not to, but I don't know if I'd buy it for that reason. Okay. Yeah. Do you think a smartwatch would serve as a distraction in your day to day life? It might actually, because if you're doing something that requires your attention and you have something beeping on your wrist, um, I think that's probably a pretty good distraction. I mean, the nice thing about a traditional watch is that it just, you, you look down and it tells you what you need to tell you, and that's kind of pretty much it. There's no really, you know, there's nothing going to surprise you on there. Mm -hmm. Smart watch might get a tax to call, whatever, and it's kind of hard to ignore. Yeah. So, that'd be a distraction. Would you value a smart watch as a practical accessory? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think for, from a practicality standpoint, if you have a use for it, I think it's very good. Especially mm -hmm. if you're not traditional watch wear, um, you got a free wrist, I mean, you might as well. You know, if, you, if you have use for it, go for it. I mean, I think it's definitely practical. Would you add or take away from, or what would you add or take away from the smart watch to make it more user friendly? Uh, this could be something along the lines of accessories or applications. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I don't know if I'm not really enough about the functionality of one to make it easier to use. I do know that with the Apple Watch, I'm not really in love with all the little icons mm -hmm. that are on the main screen. I just think that it's really difficult to get to where we want to be. Um, you know, I know if you push that button on the side, it gets like your top contacts up. 
I almost wish they had replaced that with top applications. Mm -hmm. um, because I can go, I can, if I can, you know, if I can be able to push that, I can get like, you know, messages, emails, weather, maps, and an address book where I can look people up myself. That would be extremely, I think that would make it easier for me. I don't know if anyone else would like that, but for me, I think just focusing, you know, I, I like the option of having a lot of apps, but I wish I would serve as a way to focus and only use the apps or be, you have the apps presented to me in a way that I could use them easily. But the, I think the phone is a great because you can move icons into folders and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I know right away when I look at my home screen, whatever five or 10 apps I use the most or really only use are just yeah. right there. And I wish, I think, I think Apple would really do a good job of, or could really do a good job of honing in and allowing users to hone in exactly what they use and make it a lot easier for the people to get to that. Mm. Um, without having to filter through all the other little stuff that's on this a very very small screen to begin with, that can be very cluttered. You know. So now moving on to the aesthetics of smartwatch, mm -hmm. uh, what type of materials and textures uh, make a smartwatch aesthetically pleasing? Um, it depends on the function. Um, I think from a practicality standpoint, if you're using it as a really like I said, it's a really rugged piece, a really one that can, you can put through a lot of, um, you know, stress, and you whether it be, you know, running or whatever. Um, aluminum or steel, absolutely. Um, maybe even aluminum probably over steel gets a little bit lighter. Um, steel can get very, very heavy, especially with wristwatches. Um, if you want to be a dress piece, um, either polished stainless steel or gold, I'm um, kind of having that before. The, I, the, I think the gold just doesn't make sense from a value perspective. Unless you just have, you know, if you can write blank checks and money's no object and that's not your concern, then, I mean, gold's fine if you want that look. From a value perspective, I don't think gold makes the most sense. So you're probably going to want polished stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So, in comparison with a smartwatch and a mm -hmm. traditional wrist watch, uh, would you expect the same materials to be used? In no. No. No, very different. Um, Steel is a really great material for watches and for all smart watches and traditional wrist watches. It's really fantastic because it's, it's really rugged. Steel can go through a lot and still look great. And the great thing about steel is, you know, it, the reason, one of the reasons the Rolex Submariner does so well in sales is because you can take it diving anywhere in the world and you get scratched on it, you can take it to a service center and can buff it out, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, steel is a really, really great material for watches. So I think steel. Whether it be traditional smartwatches or wrist watch or smartwatches, um, comparing the two, I think steel is, is always going to be a good material. Mm. So steel is great. I don't think you could have a traditional wristwatch made off aluminum. I think it's too light. I think it's too prone to shock, and it could damage really good Swiss movement inside. Mm. Um, I don't think that's smart. And on the reverse side, I don't think gold is a good material for a smartwatch because yeah. it's too expensive for a piece of technology, it's gonna go obsolete. Again, smartwatches, I think you're gonna to have to constantly replace. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna have new features, you may know, have a camera on, I mean, they, they could be constantly replacing a smartwatch. I think if you keep encasing them in gold, I think it's just too expensive. Um, but traditional wristwatches are great in gold, because you know it's, at that point, it's almost a piece of jewelry. Um, certain watches, like a Rolex Day Date, that only comes in gold. The reason for that is it's designed to be a little bit flashy, it's designed to be a piece, piece of jewelry. It's designed to last forever, never go obsolete. Um, so I think steel will always be relevant for both for both of them, but I think smart watches are better than aluminum, and traditional watches are better than gold. Mm -hmm. So with regards to the wristband on a smart watch, mm -hmm. what material would you expect it to be made out of? Yeah, I think that depends too on what the use is. If you're using it for more, you know, physical applications, I think rubber is a really great material, um, mainly because it's light and easy to clean. Um, I think that's really the key is, you know, how, how easy it is to take care of. Um, so yeah, if you're using it for that, that's fine. If you're using it for kind of an everyday wear with anything kind of look, um, a steel bracelet to my, to go with the case is fine too. I, I really, really like Apple's mesh bracelet on their smartwatch. I think if you need that as an everyday watch, um, I think that looks really good on there. I think it, it works, suits the watch very well because of because it's kind of square on the side, it, it goes with the case. Um, so I think if you want an everyday piece, steel, steel bracelet's good. But if you want dress, strictly a dress piece, leather's a classic. Black or brown leather is absolutely a classic. 
It will always look good, and it's also very easy to replace. So what colors would you like on your watch? Of colors? What colors would you like? Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of the case, or? Um, it could be the case, it could be the band itself. Right. For me, um, I'll find a smartwatch, either brushed aluminum or polished stainless steel. Mm -hmm. I think it's the way to go. Um, if I was buying more of a physical workout, stuff like that, I'd probably go brushed aluminum, make cuts light, and if I, if I like, you know, scratch it or put a little dent there, a little uh, kind of spot on it, it's not going to show with brushed material. Mm -hmm. But for, for dress reasons, I'd probably go polished. It just looks better. Um, stainless steel with a black or brown leather band. I think that always looks good, always a classic. Mm -hmm. And but if we're going for the rubber band, maybe you know black or white always looks good. Something basic. I'm not really into like red or those bright green colors. It just yeah. doesn't work for me. So, I mean, that's definitely a market for it, but I just don't. I, I like more traditional looks. Yeah. What about normal watches or typical wrist watch? But what are your color preferences? Yeah, uh, so the two I own right now, traditional wrist watches. I have um, one is stainless steel mm -hmm. um, with a really, really great. I love kind of a midnight blue face. Um, the reason I bought that one, I think it always looks good with pretty much anything. It's good. You can, I can put, I can wear it with the with jeans. I love that combination um, with a three six nine dial and. Our markers and with that are aluminum, um, so it's, I can see in the dark, which is nice. I like that a lot. Um, on that, the bracelet is and part of the lugs of it are brushed. The sides are polished stainless steel, um, so kind of nice contrast. Second one I own um, is all polished stainless steel with a black leather band and a um, black face with aluminum hour markers. So it's, you don't have the loom factor, but um, it still can be dressed up or down. So again, both very traditional options, and I think both you know are just fine. So that's I like traditional muted colors. So what's your initial thought when you encounter someone wearing a smartwatch? I don't really know. Um, I I guess, I don't know. Um, I think mean, it's kind of cool to see them out there. I think mean, when they when they first came out, I saw people wearing Apple watches. Like, I was amazed how many people bought them. Yeah. Um, especially because the lot people have been. Say the watch market's dying out. Um, people aren't wearing watches like they used to because they can see the time on their phone. Um, so when I saw people start wearing Apple watches when I'm, they wouldn't wear a normal watch, I think that's kind of neat because it it gives the watch interest kind of a boost. Yeah. So I think they can both. You know, I, I, there's a really great article in Business Insider about um, how. They're not really the smartwatch industry and the traditional watch industry shouldn't be competing. They're generating they're generating a mutual interest in each other. So someone who might might buy a smartwatch might realize, yeah, I really like watches now. I like have some on my wrist, and you know when they want to make a long term purchase, might walk into a Rolex dealer or an Omega dealer and um, look at something. I mean, so I think it's they can have, you, you, just because you have one doesn't mean you can't have the other. So I think um, I, it was cool to see people start wearing them right away. Um, because I saw a real interest in watches being generated, which, which was nice to see. So I don't know if I think anything right away, but I was—I will say I was amazed when they first came out to, to see how quickly people bought them. I think that was pretty cool. So, do, do people who wear smartwatches look cool or nerdy, or well, how would you? I don't think it. I don't think the watch makes them look that way okay. in particular. Um, you know, I've seen people, you know. You know, dressed completely like in a sweatsuit with a smartwatch, and that looks great. And if you'll wear a suit and tie the smartwatch, it looks great. I don't think the watch itself defines how someone looks, it's how they wear the product. Um, and it's all about, you know, what looks appropriate with what, with what wardrobe choice. Um, you know, I, it, in the same way, I would not wear a gold watch with, you know, gym shorts. It just, I think it just looks kind of, it, it, to me, it doesn't look good. Um, and I think the same can go for a smartwatch. It just it, it's like any other piece of anything you wear. It, it it's all about context. So whatever you wear it with, that's how it can be perceived. So going back to the preference of smartwatch, uh, where are some places you would wear a smartwatch? Um, I the exercise thing I think is relevant. If I'm exercising, you know, if I'm on a treadmill or whatever, I think that's that's a good spot for it. Or if I'm using, like I said, the map function, 
that are in a new city I'm not familiar with, I think that's a good plot spot for it. Um, or if I'm doing every day, if I, I don't use the Apple Pay feature, I know there is an Apple Pay feature on it, I don't use it. Um, but if I'm just like going grocery shopping, it's a pretty easy way to, to pay for it. You just put your watch up to a, a little scanner thing they have. and So I guess that would be relevant. Everyday use or whatever function it's used for, I think is relevant. So based on the places you would use a smartwatch, what sort of aesthetics would you want for the one you want the watch to have? It's gotta be it's gonna be relevant in all it's gotta look good with everything I wear. Okay. Um so I couldn't like I said I couldn't have like a lime green rubber band. I just didn't no. I, I don't think that works for me. Um so it, it couldn't have anything really loud. Um but if I had like a, a nice like I said, that, that apple that steel apple band they make, I think that would look good. Or they make a really, really great um black leather band, I think that I think that would look good too. So it's stuff like that, stuff that really never is trendy. Always just kind of looks appropriate. So it has to look like, you know, simple. Could you see yourself maybe changing the bands? For yeah, definitely. Bands? Yeah, definitely. I think that's one of the best parts of the Apple Watch is you can do that. I, think that's, I, think, I don't think the other ones can do I, don't, I mean, I don't know, but I don't, I don't think the other ones can do that. I really like that Apple does that because you can throw the rubber band on when you want to, you know, exercise or work in the yard or whatever it is you want to do with it. Um, but if you want to put a suit on and you still want your smartwatch on, you can put a leather band on it and it'll still look absolutely appropriate. So I think that's kind of neat that you can do that. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would use that function. Okay. So now we're gonna dive into smartwatch expectations. Mm -hmm. So the next series of questions, uh, the final series of questions really, will go into kind of your perceptions mm -hmm. of the sure. smartwatch itself. So going off of that, what do smartwatches say about economic status? I don't have to say anything about economic status, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, I think well, I think with the Apple Watch in particular, not so much, I think really just the Apple Watch, um, if you buy the higher end one, it's going to be a status symbol. You know, I think people might re recognize the Apple Watch, is it called the Edition? Or was it the top one? Um, I can't remember what yeah, it's called. The, the top, yeah, the top model, yeah, I think... Um, People, everyone kind of seems to know what that is, which is interesting to me. Um, so when people see us a, a polished gold Apple Watch, and they realize it's going to cost upwards of ten thousand, I think that could be recognized as status symbol. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, I, I don't think this. If you buy the lowest end one, people will necessarily think you couldn't afford the highest end one. I think the difference, you know, I think that's the difference between smart watches and traditional watches. Um, you know, if you buy you know an eighteen karat gold or platinum, you know day date, you know people are gonna know that's that costs much as a car. You know that that people know right away that's a solid gold watch or platinum watch, and that's extremely extremely expensive. Um, with the I think with smart watches it's different. I am I don't think you can have that same perception as you know what you can and can't afford. Um, but I guess it's kind of true with smart or weather watches too. I mean, a lot, you know, there's a lot of very wealthy people who wear, you know, a Timex because it's a very, very reliable watch that you know is always going to work. Um, so I think this, the status, I think, you know, people recognize the high end models and smart watches and know they're very expensive. But other than that, I don't think the lower end models to know that you, know, you can't afford the higher end one. I think it's just a different thing, yeah. which I think is the difference between that and regular watches, um, just as a public perception piece. What's your uh, take on Tag Heuer's smartwatch that they just released? Yeah, I've been reading a little bit about that. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it. I think it's cool that they're doing it, though. Mm -hmm. Tag's a really, really great brand. That I don't think it's enough credit. Um, and I think they're doing a really good job approaching this thing and diversifying. Um, mm -hmm. you know, about 10 years ago, they made a cell phone mm -hmm. um, that never really sold all that well. Um, that might have been their intent. I think they are trying to make it a very exclusive cell phone. Um, and in that case, I guess it might have been okay. But I think um, that them making that is a really cool step in seeing traditional watchmakers branch out into smart watches. Mm -hmm. um, my hope is that they don't go completely that way. Yeah, That's my concern. I don't want, you know, to only walk into like a, a really good watch dealer and only see digital watches. I, want, I still want the mechanical watches too. Um, so I, I like that they're doing it. I think it's great that they're diversifying. I think if they keep both product lines, 
It can generate mutual interest. You know, people who buy their traditional ones can go with the smart watches. People who buy the smart go the traditional, and you can up the sales that way and start seeing a resurgence in the watch industry. Um, the company I like the most with the smart watch, the traditional manufacturers that are branching out into that, is I don't know if you've seen IWC mm-hmm. is making kind of a smart watch feature on their watch bands. I think that's very very cool. The reason I think that is because I think IWC, which is also a really really great company. Um, with a lot of great heritage, a lot of great history, and really great watchmaking, um, is I think they understand that techno- the smartwatch technology is going to be, you're, it's going to be obsolete. It's always going to have a turnover. You're always going to have the next greatest thing. I think they realize that if you can just replace the band, it's far more cost effective mm-hmm. than replacing the entire unit. Mm-hmm. And when you pair that with it's, you know, they're going to put that on traditional mechanical watch. I think when you have that, that combination, you're going to see some really, really cool stuff. So I really hope IWC takes the lead on that and really starts showing that that's a really realistic possibility for smartwatches. Because um, I think that's great. That's something that I would look into eventually because I think it's a very cool application mm-hmm. of a smartwatch in combination with a really great traditional timepiece. Could, could you see possibly a third party retailer designing a band that you could probably on watch? And they would have a smartwatch feature added to it. Like that, do, do, you, do you see a lot of positive uh, potential with the band itself having the feature versus the actual face of the watch? The smartwatch. Yeah, feature? I do. I think that I think that's what's cool about you know smartwatch is that you're gonna you know you can use the whole watch, the mm-hmm. whole and the band, everything because it's gonna the technology is gonna be there for all of it. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's a really real possibility. With the, with the traditional mechanical wristwatch, it's just not practical because the movement has to be behind the dial. Mm-hmm. So you really, really just the case of the watch is your only realistic location to actually have stuff, you know, functional. Mm-hmm. The band is just keeping on your wrist. Yeah. Um, but because of wiring and you know different ways you can route, you know, with circuit boards and you can make them. I don't, I don't know if the technology would find it, but I know that you can, you know put technology in to conceal certain places um, within, you know, a watch band or a watch face. So that could be a very cool application of it. You could yeah. expand, they'll use the whole package, not just the watch dial and watch case itself, but that, which is kind of neat, I think. So if you were to purchase a smartwatch, how much would you presumably expect to pay for a smartwatch? Yeah, I think, I think three, four hundred would be the maximum. Okay. Reason being is, I, cause I think the turnover is so high. Yeah. You're going to see so much new technology coming out, especially now, because it's, it's always exponential, I think. You know, as soon as you start with one, the technology just grows rapidly. So I think from a value perspective, it would be really, really hard to spend a whole lot more than that. You know I'd have to replace it in a year or two anyway. Um, so I think, I think where Apple put its, their, their sport model, I guess, which is their entry level, I think, um, at what, it's like 300. Mm-hmm. I, think that's, I think that's about us, I think that's the right spot. Mm-hmm. So, in relation to the price, what would your expectations be for a smartwatch? So, for instance, would you have higher expectations and demands for a premium price watch versus an entry level watch price? You mean smartwatches? Yes. Well, yeah, I. I think not. Not in terms of material. Mm-hmm. I think if it was gold, I wouldn't expect anything more. If it was steel. But if it's a difference between like, a, if there's a technology difference, then yeah, I have different expectations. But I, I don't think I'd expect, you know, it, to me, if the smartwatch does all of its functions correctly, that's all I really expect. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't expect anything more than it can do, so. So, I guess, what, what specific features of a smartwatch would invoke your curiosity the most? Um, that's, you know, I don't really know off the top of my head. I think, like, like I said, I think the, the one that's gotten me the most excited right now is the maps thing. Okay. To me, the maps thing, and I really like the airline boarding thing there. For me, the airline boarding thing I think is very neat to me. Um, because, you know, I, losing a plane ticket is, yeah, that's a complete hassle. I think if you can eliminate that with having it on your wrist, um, while still preserving the security of the plane ticket, and that's very important. Um, that's really neat. Um, but I there's really nothing out there that really has got me really, really into it and wanting me to go buy one. 
with that said, I think we're going to see things in the next year or two. Um, or I will. I don't, we don't know that. I don't know what that is yet. But I think eventually I'm going to see something that's a practically useful smartwatch. Where I'm going to say yes, I need to have that. Um, but I think like any first generation item, um, there's still room for development. So I think I don't think we're quite there yet. I think in it, in two years we're going to be. It's not even going to be remote. It's in product. So we'll see what we'll see what's up then. So will smartwatches add or to take away from day to day personal communication? Um, as of now, I don't think it'll affect it. I think it's too similar to a cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, this, to me, the Apple Watch does nothing different than a cell phone. To me, it's a small cell phone on my wrist. Um, so right now, I don't think it adds or subtracts anything. In a few years from now, it could be very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, it, you could be camera involved on it. I think that's, I think that the person that, that's the next feature. I think putting a camera on it, I think it's, yeah, that's going to be next. Um, it seems to be next with everything. I just remember when we had a camera or something, it's going to be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but I think the camera is probably going to be next. And after that, who knows? Um, so I guess when the next generation Apple Watch comes out, we'll see. Um, what that does, but right now I don't think it answers a trick or anything. So, this is our last and final question. So, just to wrap things up, yeah. would you rather, in the process of gift giving, mm -hmm. uh, would you rather give a smartwatch or a luxury watch yeah. to someone? Depends on the occasion. Okay. Um, if it's a simple Christmas gift for my dad or a family member, I guess a smartwatch. Um, a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is cost. You know, it's for 300 bucks, I think it's a very appropriate, you know, kind of, yeah, I think it would look a little goofy if you're giving someone a $40,000 Rolex for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I don't think this, I just think it's kind of goofy. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I don't know if it's necessarily appropriate. Um, unless there's some milestone that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, with the smartwatch, I think it's just, it's also a novelty factor. You know, they can kind of, and it, as a gift, they can kind of play around with it. Um, you know, I think with a traditional smart, a traditional watch, you know, everyone kind of knows how to work it. Um, you know, if it's a quartz movement, you, you pull it out until the time and put it back in and done. You know, if it's a mechanical movement, you can, you wind it up and set the date or the day or whatever features are on there and you're done. Mm -hmm. um, there's really not a whole lot of exploring that comes along with it. Um, so I think it, it, similar to kind of the other stuff I said, it's all in context. It's all it's all relative, you know. With that said, if you know if it was you know if you know if it was you know some kind of anniversary or something, if it was a really great milestone, if it was a college graduation or whatever, I don't think smartwatch would be appropriate. I think it's too much of a toy. Um, I think it wouldn't last long enough. You know, I don't want so, yeah, it's something you wouldn't throw out. Um, whereas if you buy a really, really great traditional wristwatch and, you know, and, you know, gold or steel and gold or polished steel, it's going to last forever. And it's always going to be the memento of this occasion. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas a smartwatch wouldn't say that. So it's all relative to why the gift is being given, who the gift is being given to, um, and the occasion. So I think it's a lot, that's the key there. Um, okay. yeah. Great. Well. Thanks again for yeah, the time with you. Sure and uh, I'm just gonna end the video. Okay, so thanks for taking the time to participate in our study. I'm AJ Hoffmeister, and I'll be moderating the interview. The purpose of this research is to better understand consumers' general attitudes towards smartwatches. The result of our research we will, we hope, help us understand the smartwatch market and create a new product accordingly. I want to stress. I want to stress that your participation is entirely voluntary, that you, that you may choose not to answer any question, and that you may leave at any time that you choose. We are videotaping this session only so that we can more easily produce a written transcript of the discussion. Everything you say here will be kept confidential, and we will not identify you by name in the transcript of the meeting or in our research reports. So I'd just first like to start off uh, by having you introduce yourself. Um, can you tell me where you live, how old you are, uh, where where do you work, or what do you do, and if you go to school, please name your major. Uh, Dominic Ronaldo. I'm from Bloomingdale, Illinois. Live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
Um, I'm a student at Marquette University and a major in electrical engineering. Excellent. So now we're doing our focus group on watches. So what is your attitude towards regular watches? Um, do you wear watches at, by chance at all? Um, I wear watches as more of an accessory um, with phones. Nowadays you don't need the functionality necessarily. Um, so yeah, I wear okay. them mostly to go out. So it's more of a, okay, so do you wear them for luxury or high-end watches, I guess? Um, at this point, nah, I like to keep it in lower price range. Um, probably about 50 to $100. And yeah, I wear it casually. So. Okay, so how do you perceive luxury watches versus regular watches? Uh, one day I'd like to own um, one or a few luxury watches. Um, I think they're sort of a statement to how a man carries himself. If um, they're also they also can be good investments as far as resale value, um, as long as you choose the right ones. Okay, excellent. So you're saying that it makes a statement. So that was my next question. What do luxury watches say about their owners? It makes a statement and makes them feel classy, I guess you would say. Yeah. Uh, I guess so it's, it all depends on the kind of watch. It um, Because there's such a variety, you could say so many things. They could be a watch with a face bigger than your hand with diamonds that say you want to show what you have basically there's more subtle ones which I prefer with a clean face um, kind of like a minimalist design okay so would you buy a luxury watch as a gift for yourself why or why not I would um, mostly because they're a lot of money unless a spouse decided to get it for me um, I wouldn't expect a friend or someone to spend that kind of money. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so leading on to my next question. Would you buy a luxury watch as a gift for another person? Again, if it was a spouse or family member, um, someone I felt close enough to, uh, I don't think I would have a problem buying that. Okay. In your own words, how would you compare smart watches to traditional watches? Um, I definitely think smart watches are for people who can't always reach in their uh, pockets, who find themselves in situations where they feel it's better to have everything they everything their phone has on, at the touch of a button on their wrist. I personally don't need all the functionality on my wrist. I have no problem going on my phone to do the things I need to do. Okay. Okay. So next we're going to ask you about your general attitude towards smart watches. Would you own or would you want to own a smart watch, say now or in the future? Uh, I personally wouldn't want one. No. I don't see reason personally for it um, yeah okay so what brands come to mind when you think about smart watches uh, Samsung and Apple Samsung and Apple and why do those pop into your head um, they're at the forefront of all mobile technology right now between galaxies iPhones mp3 players um, those are the two names that come to mind Okay, excellent. So, how would you describe their smartwatch products? You mentioned Samsung and Apple. Um, I think they're very similar. Um, slightly different designs. Very sleek. Um, very functional. Okay. Do you, do your smartwatch preferences differ from the from that of your peers? I would say so. Um, I know plenty of people who love their smartwatch who use it all the time, but I don't think I would personally have a use for it. Okay.
If given an opportunity, would you choose a smartwatch over an equally valued traditional watch? And what factors would play in this role of your decision? Uh, no, I would definitely go with the traditional watch. Uh, I like the uh, analog clock classic look of a traditional watch rather than digital that you see on various types of watches or um, smart watches in particular. Um, yeah, like the it definitely the biggest draw to a traditional watch is the analog feature. The analog feature? Okay. So what characteristics would your ideal smart watch have? Ideal smart watch. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what else off the top of my head that they already don't have. Phone, music, control, pedometer. Would, would you like something, like you're very active, would you like something to track your, say, weightlifting um, schedule or something yeah. like that? Like a, if they offered that, a feature like that, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, that would definitely draw my eye to it more than it has in their recent releases. Okay, excellent. Do you think wearing a smart watch could affect your interaction with your friends and family? Mm. I don't think it would any more than your mobile phone already does. Okay. Um, that's just an accessory. If anything, I think it would. A person who has a smart watch obviously use it, is on their phone enough going in and out of their pocket enough to feel that to reduce that they can go to their wrist so if anything I think it would limit um, how much you're on your phone rather than interacting with people excellent okay so now we're going to talk about smartwatch usability so what functionalities of a smartwatch might seem useful in your daily life um, water resistance um, kind of a durability in case taking it on and off it dropped it slipped out of my hand um, or being knocked up against things okay uh, you're probably two of the most important things okay excellent so do you think a smartwatch would lessen your time spent interacting with your smartphone uh, definitely uh, very often you find yourself just holding on to your phone for no reason or just every two seconds you can you click just to see the time put it down and then realize that you didn't look at the time at all okay. so then you look at it again okay excellent uh, would you wear a smartwatch during uh, a fitness activity to measure your exercise yeah so if it or even uh, say you're walking to class and it's tracking your steps or how many miles you walk in a day would you use something like that, a feature? Um, I mean, if it was able to do something with more along the weightlifting wise, I probably would. Otherwise, my um, Samsung Galaxy does the pedometer and miles tracked already. So. Okay, so you wouldn't actually need it then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question is, do you think a smartwatch would serve as a distraction in your day-to-day -day life? Especially um, nowadays with you know, how connected we are. Yeah, I could see it drawing my attention away from class, especially. Um, it's one thing to have to, excuse me, uh, to pull out your phone in the middle of class. Some teachers frown upon it a lot. Some see it as disrespectful to the professor. Um, so I can see it as a very discreet way to do everything I would do on my phone. Just to be on your wrist, right? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Would you value smartwatch as a practical accessory? Um, I mean, for a certain person, for a, I guess like for a certain style, some people may pull it off better. better. I don't believe I, it would fit into my style as an accessory um, so yeah I definitely think that would be a person to person thing okay so would you add or take away um, let, me, let me rephrase that 
Would, how would you make a smartwatch more user friendly? Like, what would you add or take away from a smartwatch today? Any, any accessories or apps that you would add or? Um, I mean, I don't have any real like in-depth knowledge of what they offer outside of answering a phone or controlling your volume on okay. your music or something. So I wouldn't really know. Okay. So smartwatch aesthetics is our next topic here. So what type of materials, textures would make a watch aesthetically pleasing? Materials and textures. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, leather wristband. Uh, I don't know if wristband's right, but the part that locks it down, I, I'm a big fan of leather. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how practical that is for a smartwatch as far as that scene is a very person like who is doing a lot of things, very active. So I'm not sure how leather would interact with um, an active lifestyle, but, yeah. and then a metal face is definitely... Metal face? Okay, excellent. So you'd expect the same materials to be on a smartwatch, right? Yeah. Excellent. So, next we're going to talk about the wristband. What do you think that should be made out of? Like, precious metal, leather, plastic, rubber, um, cloth material? Um, leather is definitely my favorite. Um, Metal, as far as a smartwatch would go, I don't think that would be very good. Uh, they don't, it kind of slides around more. But um, <clears throat> on a traditional watch, I do like metal as well. Metal, okay. What colors would you like in your watch? Uh, I like to stay simple with black or silver or a combination of either. Okay. Uh, like a watch that can go with many different things. Okay. So you wouldn't like anything crazy, no crazy colors, just traditional, you know, either black or brown or even yeah. uh, and like gun metal. Would that yeah, be cool? gun metal would be very nice. Uh, unless there was an interchangeable feature of the wristband or where I could buy multiple colors without having to pay the full price for a new head every time mm -hmm. or a new face, that would be... Very nice that that would be cool they have different colors then, but Okay. Yeah. So what's your when you see somebody wearing a smartwatch, what's your initial thought? Um uh, top of my head kind of like nerdy, uh, I don't know. Um uh, someone who's definitely uh, prioritizes on communication on being able to answer their phone in an instant. Uh, yeah. Connected. Very connected. Yeah, very connected to their mobile device. Okay. Um, what are some places you would use a smartwatch? Um, I can see it being very helpful at a gym or on a run. Um, if you're in a crowded area, public transportation, for instance, can be very helpful. It's, sometimes it's really hard to move around to reach in your pocket. Um, if it was just on your wrist, just lift it up really quick and do what you need to do. Excellent. So now we're going to talk about smartwatch expectations. What do smartwatches say about economic status? Um, I definitely think they make a statement as far as um, prioritizing, I guess, where you're spending money. Um, I wouldn't say they're the most affordable thing, but I think the companies that make them do a good job of making them not outrageously expensive. So I wouldn't say seeing someone with a smartwatch would make me think they're very rich, but I think it kind of sets like a low, uh, high C or a high floor, I guess, to okay. where their social or their economic status is. Okay. So, how much would you pay for a smartwatch? Um, I guess relative to what phone prices are today, I'd probably at max personally spend. 
$200. If I saw myself the need to get a smartwatch and or an instance where I find it practical and it, it really helps me with my communication, then I don't I wouldn't see a problem spending about two hundred dollars. Okay. About two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. like, okay, that's about, that's your ceiling. Yeah. Is there anything else that you know you would have to have, like maybe a you know, would you spend five hundred dollars on a smartwatch? Um I couldn't see myself doing that unless it was absolutely vital to how I'm communicating with people, how I'm answering my phone. If I found myself having trouble getting my phone time and time again, okay. where it became kind of a necessity rather than just a perk. Makes sense. What specific features of a smartwatch invoke your curiosity? What are you interested in? I don't know. Again, I'm not really too informed on what smart smartwatches offer. Just kind of see the commercials of people doing active things with them and easily sliding to answer their phone and change the volume. So I can't say like a specific feature intrigues me. Would I want to learn more? Like, yeah, I probably would. Okay. Will smartwatches add or take away to personal communication overall? What do you think? Um, I definitely think they could take away. Uh, if you're having a conversation and you feel your phone vibrate, you know it's a text, you feel like it's inappropriate to look down at your phone while you're in, a, in the middle of a conversation, you can just wait, the text will wait. Um, but if it's on your wrist and you feel your wrist vibrate, you're automatically going to twist and look. I feel like... Um, and outside of communication, like, I feel like it could distract while driving as well. Mm -hmm. um, people, people that will look at their phone will look at their phone or their watch regardless, but I feel that people who have the restraint to say the text can wait would be more prone to seeing like, oh, it's just my wrist. I'm, That's hard to find nowadays too because most people are usually yeah. so connected that you know they're always checking their phone. Mm -hmm. So you believe that personal communication will stay the same. You don't think that um, anybody will just be connected through the internet as far as, how do I say this? You think people will still have the same personal communication between one another and not be just always on their devices? You don't, you don't think anything else will change? No, well, I thought I think that personal communication would get worse. You think so? Because it makes it even more accessible. Okay. Than reaching in your pocket for your phone. Okay. It, yeah. So, last question here: Would you rather give a smartwatch or a luxury watch to someone? Um, definitely. And also, would you? Which one would you rather have? Uh, in both instances, definitely. A traditional watch, luxury watch. Um, Can you uh, elaborate on that a little bit for me? I feel like whether you're giving or receiving one, a luxury watch takes much more time and effort to distinguish a nice one, something that that person would like or I would like. Knowing I, or getting a watch, a luxury watch that I end up loving or liking, whatever, shows me that that person knows me that that person knows my interests and dislikes and stuff like that. Whereas a smartwatch could very well, I mean, if I knew someone who's always on the go and could use it, that could show, that could be very helpful in someone's life. But I feel like the um, luxury watch is more personable as a gift. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. That's all the questions we have. I really appreciate it.